Hi everyone, welcome back again to my channel. This is Faith Series Podcast and your host is Belize Ribori. Um, I do content about Christ and I also do a few testimonies about my life if you haven't already seen them. Um, but today I am going to share my testimony on how I got a job, God gave me a job and how, yes, I found employment after so many years of not being employed. So yes, hear along and hear the testimony that I have to share with you and the goodness of God and what he does. So it all starts when I was in high school. Um, I had been trying to look for a job for the longest time. Um, so people my age were finding jobs, you know, at like Macca's, Domino's, retail places. And I had looked for a job and your girl could not find a job. <laughs> Even in like the simplest places as like retails, like in Macca's, in Domino's, in places like that. And um, I sat down and I was just like, is there something wrong with me? Um, and then I decided that I was going to do traineeships. And my aim for these traineeships was to actually get a job um, at the end of these traineeships. So I first got my traineeship in um, this pharmacy place and that did not go well. <laughs> that did not go well. Um, I ended up having a few disputes with the manager there. Um, that was not on my end, obviously. <laughs> Um, so I ended up, ended up leaving that place and I found a traineeship at a um, grocery store. And so basically I was just working there as a cashier. Um, that also went okay. It actually went okay from my thought. Um, but then I thought that they were going to give me a job after because they had also promised me that after my traineeship, I would end up having a job. But to my surprise, my traineeship ends and then they never contacted me again and I never got rostered again. That is how it ended with my traineeships. And I sat down and I just, you know, literally just gave up because I was trying everything and I could not get a job. I literally searched everywhere and I could not find a job. And this was also previously before I actually came to know Christ and to give him my requests of wanting a job and finding employment. So fast forward, I graduate high school and I decide to enter into uni and pursue my bachelor's degree that I was going to pursue. Um, and yes, I, in my heart, I've always wanted to work with refugees and work with people obviously from like diverse backgrounds. So I entered into um, a degree that would help me actually achieve that. Um, it was a bachelor's of human services, but it's basically like social work. The only difference is that social work also has a bit of clinical side towards it and human services doesn't really have that. Um, yes, but it's basically the same. So anyways, I entered into that and I studied that. And when I was studying, I was still searching for a job um, because everybody around me was working. They would study and then they would also go to work as a means of obviously income as a student. Um, and I tried everything possible. <laughs> I applied jobs, places everywhere, you name it, and nothing happened. I never got a job. It was at my last year when I was about to graduate my last semester of uni that I actually got a job. <laughs> and this was the hand of God as well. As simple as the job that I got was, it was also part of God's um hand in my life and obviously provision in my life so anyways so I end up applying no uh, before that I prayed and I told God God literally I have been looking for a job for the longest time and I'm now graduating I have no experience how am I going to get a job in this degree that I have done first off I have never worked a proper job in my entire life so what am I going to do and how is this going to go about? So I go and pray. I do my fasting and prayer that I always do because I used to do it um, during the year. So at the start of the year, the middle of the year and the, um, the end of the year. Um, yes, and it was just a way of me putting God first um, with everything that I did, with my studies, with my life, with literally everything. Um, and then I went to God and I told him, literally, I have not worked in my entire life 
this degree that I'm completing, I don't, I, w- I don't know if I'll get a job because I have no experience. Um, I have never worked a proper job that I will say this is a proper job. And I told God that and I said I was already looking for jobs in like youth work. So youth work was like an entry level to what I needed to do so that I could work my way up. Um, and I told him that I want to get a job in the youth work uh, sector. But if that's not your plan, please open a door for me at maybe a retail stall so that I could at least get money to do other stuff that I want to do as well. And yes, obviously it was his will. So he gave me a retail job. <laughs> he gave me a retail job. So my first ever job was working at Officeworks. And this was literally my first ever job. I began working there and I enjoyed it. It was a nice job and it actually paid me fairly well. While working at that job, um, I finished my bachelor's that I was doing. And yes, so I was eligible to apply into other fields of study that I had done obviously I began applying at other places and I landed a job in youth work so meaning I was working with kids that had various behavioral issues so I began working there as a youth worker and that was also the hand of God on how I got the job because I was also young and they were not warning young people I was around maybe 20 years of age and around 20 or 21 I can't remember but that was an issue because they didn't want a person that's too young because the kids as well are usually very young they're about you know ranging from the lowest young age that you know of to 17 years of age so there wasn't really much of a gap but obviously I ended up getting that job which was a blessing from God and there I worked there for like a year but I'm not gonna lie youth work was not for me (laughs) youth work was not for me it was so hard and the kids as well it was just very hard because they had so much behavioral issues and it wasn't as easy as it seems or I sounded um yes so I ended up job hopping like three times (laughs) three times different jobs um because I couldn't just stick to one job it was just so exhausting mentally physically I was just being drained being drained by these kids um the kids are not bad or anything it's just you know the circumstances that they lived that ended up making them the way they are but yes it was so hard for me so I ended up job hopping to different jobs and in my last youth work job that I job hopped was the worst like it was a peak peak of the worst of the worst (laughs) and I remember I was just so drained and so tired and I remember One day before I go to bed, I pray and I tell God, God, be for real, be for real. (laughs) How long am I going to do this? How long am I going to wait for you to actually open a door and give me a job to what I have studied and to what I I love? Because I always wanted to be um, a case manager for refugees and stuff like that. But what I was doing at that moment was actually working with... um, kids kids in residential care i have just forgotten something before that i had actually gone into a job and i had told myself that this job i was going to stick to it it was a youth work job as well and i told myself i will settle for this job and actually work my way up to the top and be maybe a case manager for residential kids um, in residential care because I, i thought you know I can't really achieve being a case manager, being a humanitarian case manager as I've always wanted since I was a kid. So anyways, I thought I was going to sit there and settle for that job. Then I go as I thought. Um, I believe God did not want me to settle in that job. Just a lot happens that I was not, it was very uncalled for. So I decided to quit that job and that's when I started job hopping to the different other jobs so anyways I reached my last job as a youth worker and I was so exhausted and so tired because I had tried everything in my means to do well and to work the best that I thought I could but it wasn't working out so anyways I got to this job that I just talked about how it was the worst of the worst and I went there and I was working with this young person and the young person was very violent 
very, very violent and it was just draining me. So on that day, I was so drained and I was so tired of the fact that I've, every day was tiring and exhausting because I, this kid was just very violent and I was just being drained. So I, um, before I, I finished my shift, because we obviously, when you work in residential care, so you sleep in that house of where, you know, the children are. So I went to bed and I remember praying and I said, God, like, I'm tired. I'm tired of this. I've been doing this job for the longest. I've been job hopping. I have prayed prayers day and night. I don't know if you're listening to me. I don't know if you're hearing what I'm telling you, that I am tired. I am very tired. How long will it take for me to actually get a job like everybody else is getting a job? But before this, I just remembered before this, um, I had also complained again to God. And what I do when I complain to God, I literally just talk to him like I would with my friend. And I would just, you know, tell him my concerns, my issues. And I remember before that I had actually complained again to God <laughs> telling him how I awful I hated the job and everything and then he told me in my mind a thought came um there's a way God speaks and he, he speaks through your thoughts and he just gives you like an idea and you're just like oh okay um so he did that and I believe he told me um you need to command you need to command the job that you will get a job um so this is very different from manifesting Christians we don't manifest we ask according to the will of God and in this instant he had told me command because I have given you authority over everything um, and it's a, it's a verse from the Bible I just can't remember it but it says I have given you authority above all things um, to trample against serpents trample against anything but I changed it and I said I've given you authority to be able to command and you will get the job in in my name in the name of Jesus so I was not manifesting <laughs> so anyways um, so for the few months I had actually been praying and commanding and saying in the name of Jesus I will get this job in the name of Jesus a door will open for me and I will reach um, where I want to go and where the will of God is for me of course because without the will of God it's not good it's not good <laughs> so anyways um i began interceding and doing that and yes so on this night when i was praying again i i remember i reminded god i said god i've done everything i've commanded as you've told me i've prayed i've fasted i've applied jobs day in day out and i'm not getting anything and i reminded him of a job that i had applied for a caseworker role and I told him, God, I even applied for that job and I did not get a response. Um, this job I had gone, I had, a <laughs> this job I had went to the interviews three times, three times. <laughs> and they had rejected me. And I remember the last time I went for the interview, I remember being like, yep, I'm not getting this job. I'm not getting this job because they would ask me questions on a caseworker type of um, questions and I want to answer from a point of view of like a youth worker so obviously it was not going to work out as I exited that interview and I said yep wrap it up you're not getting this job <laughs> so I went home and slept and I said yep that's it that's it if we leave it in God's hands if he doesn't do anything that's that's it is what it is um, but yes I reminded God and I was like I went to that job as well three times i've applied three times i've gone to the interview three times you know how much that takes me to actually p want something so much to the point where i repeat interviews three times so <laughs> so anyways um i remind god and i said what's what what do you want of me what are you gonna do um but with my prayer i sealed it off with whatever is your will let it be done because a lot of times I have tried to do things on my will um, in the way that I wanted to go and it's been the worst thing ever in my life so no matter how much things of God delay no matter how long his will seems like it's delaying he always has the best and I will show you how he did the best thing with um, my employment story um, I sleep on that night I went to bed and I slept 
and then the following day I wake up going home because um, the shifts at that youth workshop was like sleepover shifts so anyways I finished that and I went home um, tell me why tell me why oh my gosh when I remember it just makes me like just happy I remember I doing my own thing I even forgot that I had made such a prayer to God because it was a prayer of such desperation and shockingly I'm doing my own thing minding my business and then I see an email I see an email you know them emails that they send to you um telling you you've you you're either going to proceed or you're not going to proceed yes so I got one of those from that job that I had told God about the fact that I had interviewed three times and I hadn't actually gotten the job and I see that they send me the emails I'm like oh you know they're just gonna answer me now at the I've it's been months now it had been like maybe like two months and they hadn't given me a response so I said you know this is probably like a rejection email that they're sending me but then my heart was like no release don't do that because all my rejection email the minute I see the rejection email I delete it <laughs> I delete it I don't have time to read such negative stuff <laughs> so anyways um I see this email and my heart tells me Belize don't delete it open and read what it has at least maybe just open and see um, what they tell you whatever feedback they give you is something that you can learn from and that you can um, use it to apply for other jobs and do better than what you did I opened the email and the email actually had a name of a person it's not like them automated emails that you get um, so I said oh okay that's new so anyways I read the story um, not the story I read the email the email says we apologize for getting back to you late but we did find another position that we think that you will be great at and it was a caseworker role so I was like oh my gosh I was so happy on that day and I was just reminded of the fact that I had prayed the night before and God had heard me and in this prayer I had also told God that the next job that I get please I, I'm tired of interviews I've done enough of those if you if you are God please give me an, uh, a job that does not require an interview and he gave me that job I never interviewed for that job because I've already done three interviews <laughs> so I never interviewed for that job and uh, they just did my reference check and I began working and at this job I was working for with people you know twice my age people who have been in the field longer than I have um, and it was so shocking because although I was working there with people twice my age I was earning a higher pay um, higher than them most of them and I realized how God is so good and how God is so kind so anyways I keep working there for about an year but then a lot of the times as well it was a good job as a nine to five but then the only issue was th they hadn't like working from home option but it wasn't like you really couldn't do it um, it did have a few restrictions here and there but the people were nice um, it's just a great place but then I think to myself that you know I'm gonna settle here and this is good enough God has blessed me with this job guess what guess what <laughs> <laughs> one day we go to work and then before I go to work I get like an email um, a message on my phone from work and they're like everyone today you're gonna have like a really important meeting so you all need to attend so I said okay right so anyways I'll go into work and everyone is talking about the message that we all got and they're like have you seen the message I say yeah I saw the message they're like oh you know what if we get fired today I say oh hell no <laughs> no let's not hope that <laughs> but then it ended up being that way yes so we go into uh, this meeting and what they tell us is that our jobs have actually been redundant been redundant and literally my whole world fell apart I was like I thought I was now finally stable at a job that is of my qualification it's a good job and now the job is gone I took it back to God 
I took it back to God because he was the one giving me that job. And, you know, God gives, God takes away. But I do believe that with every closed door is another um, open blessing that is coming along. So anyways, the job gets redundant and they tell us by June, June this year, I remember, they tell us by June this year, um, all your jobs will be, you know, finalized and you all need to leave by the end of June. And I told myself, oh no, this is, this is the end of it. Um, I did not want to keep applying jobs in like a caseworker working with the youth and working with um, kids from child safety because that was not my passion really and it looks like that's what's going to happen and the worst case is I'm going to end up applying at child safety. Child safety is one of the jobs that are not the best. They're very hard. They're very just challenging and that's not what I wanted to get into. I go back to what I know best is praying. So I go and pray and I tell God, God you gave me this job and look it's been redundant. I don't know where else I'm going to actually get a job. I was already planning on staying here for a few years and get my experience and then working my way up to being a case manager. That's how I've always wanted. And now even this is gone. Like, what is the step from here? What do I do? And I left it in his hands and I said, God, if you're listening to me, please find me another way. Give me a blessing in another way. Um, and I need you to actually speak to me and in any way that you want to speak to me, just speak to me and tell me what you are planning with my life and with my employment issue. <laughs> Anyways, um, I pray and yes, I have in mind the fact that my job is gone and literally everyone was so traumatized once we were told that we we're losing our jobs. Literally, there's some people had worked there for 10 years plus. And for me, I had only worked for like a few months but I saw how it was so dev devastating for them because they had families, they had kids to care for. I didn't have all that, but <laughs> I myself was also devastated. But I trusted in God because God makes ways where there are no ways. So anyways, after praying, I left it in God's hands and I went about, kept working there. Um, and around this time, my auntie from New Zealand had come to visit. So one day, I am going to the toilet, middle of the night, really late like maybe around 12 in the night and I hear my auntie is on the phone and I was like oh okay and she said hello to me when I was going to the toilet but then I was like oh okay cool I didn't ask her anything or anything so I just went back to bed and the following day she's like guess what um I was talking to this prophet he was a prophet from Africa and apparently she had told her that this, the house that she was staying at, which was my house and my family's house, is that there was one person who was going to get a job. Um, yes, there was one person who a child was going to be blessed with a job. And in, in my household, <laughs> a lot of us were working, were looking for jobs. So it wasn't really me who was only looking for a job. And I remember being so, I was like, oh, okay, is this God speaking? Or, you know, maybe I'm being delusional. And I was like, oh, maybe it's not me because I didn't think it would be me or anything of any sort as that. So I was like, oh, if it's somebody else, that's good. And if it's me, that's great. So around this time, I began applying for jobs and I apply, I apply everywhere as a case manager, case worker. Uh, work wanting to work with like youth wanting to work with like kids from child safety and everything although it was not my passion I was still applying just because I did not want to go to back to being unemployed um, and I applied and I applied and I said oh god I'm tired of this and everyone around me was getting jobs um, and uh, getting interviews matter of fact there was a girl that we were working with and she had we both had applied for the same places and she had gone and been interviewed and I hadn't been interviewed so I'm like oh my goodness like do I have an issue is is there something wrong with me but no it's just my blessing hadn't come <laughs> but I was already stressing because I felt like oh no I'm going back to unemployment but that's not how God works God works in very mysterious ways that we cannot know so anyways 
um one time i see a job ad it was a case manager in like a humanitarian um working with refugees and it was what i always wanted to work as and i literally had told a lot of my workmates that i wanted to work there and it was literally my dream job working as um case manager for refugees and so i see the job ad and i say i'm not applying from here i'm not applying here why because i had applied previously i had applied i had applied and applied and your girl never got the job they never even interviewed me so i was like yeah i'm not even bothering <laughs> i'm not going to waste my efforts so you know what god did you know what he did he said yes you are you are going to apply for this <laughs> so what happens they the people from that company the humanitarian company that were looking for case managers they heard that we were closing down the place that I was working at so they sent through the job ad to my job and they're like if anyone wants to apply we'll interview them so um please send through your applications and i saw that i said oh okay maybe should i should shouldn't i but in, again you know the devil works hard he's telling me in my mind he's like girl you're not going to get the job it's not the first time you've applied he's telling me all this stuff and i truly did believe it so i didn't apply i didn't apply but again god works in very mysterious ways because i had told everyone in my job that i wanted to work with the refugees so much literally the whole office knew so my manager and these other people they come to me and they're like please please you should actually apply for this job like this is what you've always wanted to do how about you apply and then we'll also be your referees and i was like oh i don't know if i want to apply because this is not the first time i've applied and i've not gotten the job so what's the point of me wasting my time applying they're like oh you never know just apply just apply and i did apply <laughs> i ended up applying and tell me why tell me why i applied like this week the following week they called me in for an interview for an interview so i went in for the interview um and they interviewed me i was so scared i was so 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 nervous and i had prayed before that and i told god please god you know how awful i am with interviews the minute i know i'm being interviewed it's like my my brain just switches off it doesn't think straight <laughs> it does not think straight and the night before i just looked at interview questions left and right just tried to memorize but i was like am i really going to remember all this and i had come across a question that talked about um like psychosocial psychosocial assessments and i brushed through it i was like oh this is probably not going to come in the interview question that they gave me tell me why that came <laughs> that same same question came on the interview that I was being interviewed. So anyways, they asked me all these questions. They were marking us on a scale of 1 to 10. Um they asked us different questions and I'm answering, I'm doing okay. And then the last question is that one. They're like, "So can you tell me how you do a psychosocial assessment?" I said, "What the heck is that? I don't know what a psychosocial assessment is." <laughs> But it's just it just meant a case management plan. They were just making hard for me for no reason, and I remember st uh, just being stuck on that question. I'm like, I don't know, I don't know what to answer these people. And I had also prayed and told God, God, please let your favor be upon me in this interview. I don't want to fumble because I always fumble in most interviews that I do. And yes, God was with me. I had literally told God, God, I need you to like, you get a seat and sit right next to me. that when i'm doing this interview you're literally right next to me and you hear what they're telling me and like you know have your favor upon me so that they can like me at least and give me the job and god did exactly that um so i'm stuck on this question and they're like you know what we like you we like you that's the favor of god why would they say that they're like we like you so because we like you we're going to make it easier for you to answer. So they broke down the question for me. Um but they had told me before that that if I don't get this question the interview will not go on and I will not be employed and I 
I will not like my interview um, thingy will not proceed. So I was like, oh no, I'm going to mess up so bad. But then they're like, we like you. So we're going to break down the question for you. And they did exactly that. They broke down the question and everything. And I was able to understand what they meant. So because I had actually had a bit of overview done that before in my caseworker role. And I was able to answer. And they're like, yes, you have. I I used to, before every interview, I would ask them a question to see if they're going to give me the job. And I had told myself on this interview that I was not going to do that. If they were going to give me the, inter- the job, so be it. If they don't, that's okay. So I didn't ask them. But God, God, <laughs> God is very interesting. He He uses them and they end up answering me without me asking. They're like, so the next step from here is that you, we want to proceed with you. And I remember being so surprised. I was like, oh my gosh, oh my God, be for real. <laughs> I was so happy so I finished the whole interview process and I had gotten the job God gave me that job and you know what it's not that I was wise it was not that I was great it's not that I did anything literally was the hand of God and I know it was the hand of God Um, and the funny thing is that at my job I was not the only one that applied there was actually another person that had applied and this person had more skills, much more experience, much more um, knowledge, had more degrees than I did, um, had everything, had more years lived than I did. <laughs> and here I was in my 20s um, competing against people who are twice my age to get that position. And God opened the door for me to actually get it. So anyways, I end up getting the job and I was so happy. I knew it was God. I knew it was him without a doubt in my mind. And he, as he had told that lady, that prophet lady from, from Africa, um, it did come true. It was a good job and a job that really made me happy because the lady said the person who's going to be blessed with the job is going to be very happy with the job that they get. And I cannot lie, it's a job that I really like and I'm really happy about. Um, I had told God numerous times with my previous job as a case caseworker. There's a few, although I liked the job, there was also a bit of a few stuff happening that just made me tired. You know, it was a nine to five and it was exhausting. Like I would sometimes I would sit the entire day and just be so exhausted. Um, the, just the carers, the 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 kids, just exhaustion, and. I end up getting this job. The job was twice the pay that I was getting at the previous job. It was, he, ha- he has like an option to work from home. That's something that I wanted so bad. Um, it's very flexible. Um, you have your own schedule. You can do stuff whenever, but obviously you need to do your job and finish what you have to do. Um, it was just everything that I ever wanted. Like everyone is just nice it's just a good job i just can't i I cannot explain how much i love the job that i do and i know this is the hand of god um and i want to tell anyone that is struggling to get a job please trust in god and the plans that he has for you um it might seem that it's not happening but god has a really good plan and if you trust in him and stop looking at your um your your limitations and you know doubting he is gonna make it to pass just giving your plans he says i have a plan for you and it's a good plan um to build you a hope and a future please keep that in mind um trust in the lord and he will bring whatever he has said to pass and one thing is really put him first in everything it does not matter what it is as um, it might look trivial, um, it might look as simple as it is. Just give it to God. Whether it's your studies, whether it's your job, whether it's your family, whether it's really anything, just give it to God and see how he works. See the goodness of God. See how much he's a loving father that he is. Um, yes, so that's my testimony on how I got my job. So this is not the end of my testimony because I, this is just, the beginning of my testimony i'm waiting for a few more things to happen so i can give you an actual full testimony on uh, my whole you know career and i know god will do it because he has brought me far 
and he is still working on me and he he will do what he says he, he will do he does exceedingly abundantly all we could ask or think of please trust him with your plans and put him first thank you for listening um yes so that's my whole testimony on how i got my job um yes so please do like subscribe comment if you want to and yes uh just follow along and the many more testimonies that i have to give thank you very much bye